This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. I'm rocking that Rabbit Hole hat right now, by the way. Behind Rabbit Hole, uh, their award-winning spirits is the story of their founder, Kaveh Zamani, and this cat left a 20-plus year career as a psychologist, went down the rabbit hole himself with the mission to craft the world's finest spirits, and that he did my good friends. Okay, if you're looking for something truly original and unique this holiday season, Rabbit Hole is the perfect gift for yourself or for others. Share. I would recommend it. Uh, right now, I'm sipping on this Cave Hill. This is probably uh, one of my faves uh, of the four different expressions. I love all of them. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but Cave Hill, the OG, the original, that's a four-grain triple malt bourbon, is so good. It's phenomenal. Uh, they also have the high rye double malt bourbon, the sour mash rye, and the Derringer uh, that's finished in the PX Sherry Casks. Those Pedro Jimenez uh, Casks, sh- cas- them Sherry Casks. So good. Um, that, that founder, Caveza Manny, and this cat just got uh, inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame. He's the fastest to ever do so. So listen, a lot of people say small batch, they're not small batch. Um, rabbit Hole pulls from under 15 barrels at once. That's incredible. If you know anything about bourbon, that's a very small. Uh, and they're charred and toasted. A lot of people uh, quote a lot of this stuff, and they do not deliver. They are big box bourboners, and these cats are small-time hustlers. They're the indie cats. They're the backpack rap kids. Give them a try. It's a bottle that fits great in your hand, depending on how big your hand is, of course. Uh, but it's delicious stuff. Go check it out. Um, go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Use the promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Or go to rabbitholedistillery.com. Just check out where they're sold because it's in your area. I promise they're all over the map. Please drink responsibly. Enjoy. What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Heather McMahon. Heather is so unbelievably funny. She has a special out on Netflix. Son I never had. Go check that out. Check out uh, everything she's done. She's incredible. She's on the road all New Year next year, 2024. And so am I. Me and Robert E. Lee, a direct descendant of Robert E. Lee. Me and Bobby Lee are going to be on the road. Go to badfriendspod.com for those tickets. We're going to Atlantic City, New Jersey, Salt Lake City, Reno, Tucson, uh, Sacramento, Temecula, Long Beach. We end the tour uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada on 420. Come out and see your boys. We're also in Canada, Niagara Falls up there. Uh, come see us, uh, badfriendspod.com, badfriendspod.com for those tickets. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are pugils. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Jr. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's the return of Heather McMahon. You were on the show two years ago. I know. I don't remember what we talked about, so... I do. Okay, great. <laughs> but I want to start the show by saying hi to the love of your life and the yes. love of probably my life, Big Jeff, the Big J, the Juicy J, as mm-hmm. it were. Uh, he's listening somewhere to this in his own home. Jerking off hard. Yanking it! Mm-hmm. Um, it's so good to see you again. Great to see you as well. And uh, you played the Pantages last night yep. in Los Angeles. How fun was that? It was amazing. It's the Wizard of Oz and you. It literally, people were like, "Oh, you know, I was doing press and shit this week," and they're like, "So what is um, what's your show like? You know, Wicked's played there or like Hamilton." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Not Hamilton. Not Hamilton. Okay? <laughs> the opposite. I do a little song and dance. I do dance around. I come out in glitter suits, but it's not Hamilton." How many outfit changes do you have during your show? Uh, I only have one right now. I used to do too much, and now I've I've pared it back. One change. One change. Because I throw threw out my back, so I can't do what I used to do. I know. We talked about this. Now, yeah. what side is your sciatic in? Because this is, we're talking to, I, I, so I have uh, L3, L4, mm-hmm. and you're a? I'm L5, S, uh, no, yeah, L5, S2. Right. Yeah. It's the right side. My leg will just like dead leg and go numb, and I'll be like dragging it through the airport, <laughs> just like with all my suitcases, and I'm like, guys, your leg's out, the leg's out. <laughs> you're peg legging. My peg, I'm straight up fucking peg legging. This is how embarrassing... It is a, when my le- when my back officially went out, when I hurt myself. Yeah. I was at LaGuardia. It was a Saturday. I'm on the road. I'm that's flying why, to Pittsburgh. That's why, by the way, LaGuardia. That's LaGuardia. the problem. LaGuardia. Should have been JFK. You're not going to throw your back out of JFK. I know. But the new LaGuardia for Delta, because I'm Delta loyal, is mm. fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I saw this K-pop band getting out of Mer- a Mercedes Sprinter van in front of me. So I'm getting out of my car because I want to see who it is. Like, I even know... I couldn't identify anybody from a K-pop band, no. right? So I'm just like being nosy and I want to like jump out to see who's there. And I 
it literally just turn, grab my duffel, and my bat goes out. Yeah. I hit the deck in front of the sky cap. Literally, it's sky priority. And they're like, ma'am, do you need a wheelchair? <laughs> Meanwhile, all of these like hot Korean dudes with security are like, what the fuck? <laughs> Thinking I'm some fan who's like freaked out. Then they have to push me through LaGuardia in a wheelchair. Oh. And my back was out. And then I flew to Pittsburgh that night and did a show. And I was dying. But, but I, we did it. fun to get wheeled through. You're yeah, one of them. I was one of them. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Were you doing this the whole time? I was doing that. And then all my friends were videotaping me. See, like, I'm this. It's Heather. It's Heather. Yeah. I'm waving. I'm the queen's yeah. wave. Yeah. If I ever get to that point, I just hobble through the airport. They see me hobbling through. But mine's on my left side. Okay. And I have I have such a awful time. My nerves are flared right now. Like I oh, my si I have femoral and sciatic nerve are frustrated. Oh god damn. Yeah, it's fun. I'm 40. I'm surprised you're not pilled out. See? This is really good. I'm 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 fighting it really hard yeah. because because I like um the sauce. Same. So I figured if I like the sauce, I shouldn't do the pills because the bad combination. Also, the muscle relaxers don't do a lot for me. They do nothing for and me. And I I'm the kind of gal you could give me half a Benadryl and I'm out. Yeah. Like I'm I'm easy on on the pills. And and any sort of like uh painkiller just gives me the itchies. Yeah. Have you ever taken like a lower tab or an oxy? Dude, you I and just me. start itching. I get and anxious, I hate it. And I, I get and my back gets kind mm -hmm. of like up I get really more flary and frustrated. I took I um I had a, a really bad ankle injury when I first moved here, like three years into my L.A. living, and I was playing basketball, and I tore ligaments in my leg, and they gave me Vicodin. That was the first time I ever had it, yeah. and I was atrocious on Vicodin. Yeah. I, it, got, it got me more angry. I couldn't poop. Couldn't, oh, the worst. I couldn't poop. It Nothing was there. Nothing worse than being in pain and also unable to shit. I can't shit. Yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I was like, come on. So then they're like, oh, we'll give you like a diuretic and you take along with it. It was just so much stuff in my body. I was frustrated. And then finally I said, I'm not going to take the Vicodin. Uh -huh. Can I just dose up on Advil? And he was like, yeah, but who knows how effective. But it actually worked. I mean, it didn't relieve all of the pain, but enough where I could get by without feeling cracked out on Vicodin because Vicodin is just I don't like those they're too much yeah it's all too much for me I love a Tylenol 800 mm, like I can do mm. that but you really can't drink on those right because no, the Tylenol bad. with the liver it sucks now I am I'll tell you what you give me <laughs> like a Xanax yeah. and I am chilling because I run high like yeah. I'm I'm high octane a lot so for me I need this stuff to take me down take me way down oh my god take me down half a Xanax a glass of red wine after a show and I'm just like <laughs> laying in the Hilton just uh, like, you don't ever, uh... you know what? I can do a little bit of the marijuanas, but I can do like a quarter of an edible. I don't, I don't, yeah. I like to get giggly, but I've had too many bad edibles and I, you know, hate to be tropey about it, but I get, I get anxious on the edibles too. I know. Isn't that the irony is that for all those years, they're like, it helps with anxiety, yeah. hunger. <laughs> and then a lot of times I'm like, I'm so anxious. I can't eat. Yeah, yeah. And my teeth hurt for some reason. Oh, my like teeth I, hurt. And yeah. I think I'm going to vomit. Yeah. I'm like, I can't tell if my body's hot because I just smoked a J or like, what is this feeling coming up the back of my throat? Yeah. I it didn't it. used to be that way when I, when we were chilling, when we were children, it was way, it was I feel like I could, smoke, I could smoke a whole joint and be fine. Fine. If I smoke a Join. I did actually because I didn't want to take medicine for the my first like week with my leg. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I just want to walk around the neighborhood. So in the morning, I woke up in a little bit of pain. I took the dog for a walk and I smoked a whole joint to myself on the walk with my dog. And I was thinking, this is actually going pretty. I was like, this is pretty well. This is not bad. Right. And then as I circled the lap, the last lap of my block, that's when it was like. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> let's go home, baby girl. I, I'm, I was panicking way too high. And it was yeah. my own neighborhood. And I thought, man, I used to be able to smoke a joint and, and be totally fine. And now I couldn't eat breakfast because I was so baked. And I kept thinking, man, did I screw up the whole day? I'm way too high. That's the thing, too. Even when like I'm drinking, the anxiety, the hangover anxiety that I have, because I know I have to be fucking productive. Yeah. And then if the one day is like me coming flying back from the road, people don't get that like the day you travel back home is actually my most stressful day. Oh, big time. Because I know I gotta I gotta jump back in, mm -hmm. be a wife, I mm -hmm. gotta razzle dazzle, <laughs> you know what I mean? I gotta give kisses and do that shit. And then I've got two French bulldogs who have no discipline no. and run my fucking life. Yeah. And um, yeah, I get it. There's nothing worse. I do love, though, I have found that perfect little... Uh, that little tincture where I'll go into Mad Men or Men Men or whatever yeah, Men and Men, I'll yeah. say like I want to feel like I've had two glasses of Chardonnay and I maybe want to eat some like cheddar popcorn uh -huh. you know like I, I tell them exactly what I want yeah. and then they'll give me this one little strain and I'll take a quarter even if they're like these are only five milligrams I still panic and I take like half a bite you get nervous I get so nervous but what I love
love to do on my nights off. I will take a little bit. I'll take a little roadie red wine, mm-hmm. live in a gated community, and I will fucking walk around the house, the neighborhood, <laughs> and I will judge all the other cunts in the neighborhood, all of their holiday decor, and that's my me time. I like, get out, I get my steps in, and yeah, you I judge. Are, you are like a suburban mom. Oh, fuck to yeah. To the max. To the max. The red wine, is it stemless? We're talking stemless? Um, it's in a Stanley Cup, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I got the handle, and I'm doing my thing. I got my Apple Watch on. I'm getting my steps in. Yeah. Are you big steps, girl? Do you really no, abide not at by all. This? It's just it's just when I'm high. Yeah. When I'm high, it becomes a competition. I'm like, oh, we will get forty thousand steps. I'm yeah. outstepping you, dude. I haven't charged my Apple Watch in like three months. I can't but believe when, I have one. Yeah. Why do we have them? Why do we have them? I don't know. I've used it. I use it intermittently, and then every time I go, oh, all right, I'm gonna start wearing it, and then I, I'm like, I don't want. I don't like this thing. My husband's got the aura ring. I'm surprised he doesn't have a butt plug. Just checking his pulses at night. He I does. Mean, and watch this. I can make him tickle right now, <laughs> Jeff. How do you feel? How do you feel? I mean, it is like he is tracking everything. And then I still wake up and I'm like, how'd you sleep? He's like, like shit. I feel like shit. We just got a new mattress. That's when you know you're old. New we have mattress. been on a mattress fucking What journey. do you got? Do you have the uh, woo-doo, the adjustable? No, because uh, those are those weigh 7,000 pounds. You fall through the ceiling? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> um, no, we just got some uh, not sponsored Puffy brand. But Jeff literally made me do like months of market research. because To make sure this is the one. To make sure this is the one. And he was so pissed. I was on the road. And I was like, Jeff. I took the quiz online. Like, I know this is going to be good because my back's fucked. His back is fucked. So I needed, like, firm. And then it still came in, like, a box. Yeah. So he was stressed. He called me. I was in, like, Fort Lauderdale. I was like, this shit was in a box, Heather. Because he doesn't trust anything that, like, has to deflate. I think the deflate thing's so cool. You it just, is so cool. You just slip it open and then it, and it comes out. But you, they get too soft. You wear uh, through them. Uh, okay. And then I was literally, he's a big guy. I'm not exactly the most petite woman. So I was also looking at, like, weight limits for these. You know, and we were... I we I've done the market research. Now I will say, two weeks in, it's lovely, but I keep getting pushed ads from the Four Seasons for their mattress, mm. so I'm tempted to get a Four Seasons. I'm mattress. in for that. Trust me, I'm in for that. Once you sleep on one of those things, you're it, like, what are they? What are these made out of? Changes the fucking game. Little baby, like baby necks. It's baby made out of necks. baby necks. Little little no, just tiny little, baby necks. Little baby necks. It is pretty incredible when you go to these really fancy hotels and you sleep in one of their beds once. You go. Man, all those years I slept in, like, you know, the roadside inn or whatever mm-hmm. in the beginning of my career, and you were you were sleeping on, well, an infested bug be- uh, a bug bed mattress that was dog shit. Then you sleep on one nice one. It was a prison nice mattress. One. Yeah, it yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. You sleep on one nice one, you're like, holy shit. That's my one thing now on the road. I'm like, I work too hard. I will only stay at, like, a Ritz and above. Fancy. If that's what I'm going to do, if yeah. that's how I'm going to spend my money, mama's going to be comfortable. Woo! What, yeah. about, what about the people that open for you? They stay in there yeah, too. Yeah, everybody's with. That's me. funny because he, they, you know, they, well, he doesn't open for us, but he's part of the production crew here, mm-hmm. McCone, and um, we put them in probably the worst hotel that we can find. <laughs> Good for and you, I, and I mean it. But see, I'm a I people pleaser. I'm working through that. Uh-uh. I want everybody. I want it to feel like camp. I want everyone to be happy, comfortable. I could be miserable. I could have yeah. crippling sciatica, acid reflux, and like have a panic attack before a show. But if everybody else feels good, <laughs> no. then we're happy. No way, dude. You got to take yeah. some notes from us. I we, know. We put these idiots in the worst place we can find we're like is there something below a one star that's not true actually that's not true and be honest we put you guys in some really really nice hotels in fact in washington dc they stayed at the fucking nicest hotel that we stayed at which i was where'd you stay we stayed at the uh what's it called uh the St. Regis? Not the Broadmoor. Oh, we at the St. Regis. Oh, yeah, we were. My boy runs the St. Regis there. Shout out to Vadim. Yeah, that's Vadim! my spot. Vadim! That is my spot. Yeah, we now, put them there. I actually got bumped up at that location to the presidential suite. And let me tell you. Because of Vadim? Was this all because of Vadim? Vadim? Shout out to Vadim. And it's literally, it was like, I don't know, like 4,000 square feet. I'm also Marriott Bon Boy, you know. Yeah, you're top tier loyal. I, I'm you're loyal. Elite, you're yeah. elite Bon I'm Boy t- elite. I'm titanium elite. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been there. I've been yeah. And staying in them, yeah, you know, and so I got that nice presidential suite, but that Oof. nice hotel, yeah, that yeah. is it, it, that, it is nice because it helps when you're on the road and you're traveling so much. Because look, like you, you've been on it. How many cities did you do since last time we talked? You you must have done a hundred city tour or something like that. It yeah, was, it was I'm, for I'm two doing years. the same. I, I've I've quit counting. You're a lunatic. I'm a lunatic. Slow down. I know. Well, I you need do to. have a special that's out, so I guess I, I understand like using that momentum. Uh, I know is important. And and when the Netflix special comes out, it's like, well, I'm, I got to get out. I mean, I have to go. Well, that was the thing. All the timing has been so weird in my career. I'm like, okay, so I just toured for the last, you know, four years. Yeah. And then I shot the special last year. So now it's just come out. I'm already on a new tour. I'm shooting my next special next week. So I'm like, I'm just like, what is time and space? Yeah, I don't know good. where I am. If it's, work, yeah. if it's humming along like that, why stop? 
Yeah. I mean, I think if you're, if it's working in that regard, like I know people that are doing it like that, that are like, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's something's clicking. Uh huh. Then you got to just do it. You have to like obey the the universe a little bit. Yeah, we're obeying the universe. We're Where doing are you it. filming your special? Uh, in Atlanta. That's Ooh. my hometown. So we're shooting at the Fox Theater, which is like my favorite theater. Love. I'm really excited. It's going to be great. Um, but I am, you know, it's just a lot because I'm doing press right now for this last special. So I'm talking about kind of like old material. I'm on the road currently, and then I'm shooting this next one. I don't know what fucking day of the week it is. <laughs> I my say my leg is fucking numb. <laughs> I have an eczema flare up. You oh, know what I mean? where? Yeah, just everywhere. Oh, okay, just most in the down there you know uh, it just gets hot in those glitter mm-hmm. suits um no i got a deep tissue massage this morning because that's the other thing when i spend my money on I, I i get massages i like to get rubbed down when i go yeah. to different cities i got a massage this uh yesterday oh fuck yeah yeah it was what, terrible what kind, it was terrible terrible, terrible. Oh, there is I, nothing I, 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 it more was, it was you know i want to say this and, yeah and let's go over this let's let's talk about let's it. go over this yeah look anybody's allowed to do anything mm-hmm why does a guy want to be a masseuse? <laughs> here's the deal. Because here's the deal. Women want to be touched by women. Men would like to be touched by women. I'll let anybody rub me. I, I know, but hairy arms on my back. Mm-hmm. I don't like. And I just, of course I want a female masseuse. Mm-hmm. And of course my wife wants a female masseuse. Because, I, because women are strong enough to do it. So what do we need a guy for? I don't need a sweaty guy uh-huh. dripping all over me. I didn't like it. Didn't like it. And you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb and say it. Um, let's get men out of the masseuse game. Let's get them right out. Listen, I'm glad you stand for out. something. I do. I'm glad that get you them out. have this platform. Pisses me off. I got a petite guy back in Atlanta named Greg. He's a small Filipino man. And when I say he gets on me, and it is, it is, it is, is intense. Greg gay? Greg is not gay, but he's not threatening either. You know what I mean? So <laughs> he, I feel, I feel very, it's very consensual. A little very petite safe. Filipino man that is gay. Now that's someone I'll take. Now that's someone I'll take. But I, I've had big boys. You know, I remember I was getting a massage in Denver and this man must have been six, four, wasn't necessarily attracted to him, you yeah. know, um, kind of at a bus, he had a busted face, but I was like, get in there. <laughs> I want big daddy to get, I want to be broken, bruised, you like leave a little bloody. hurts you. Yes. And yeah. today I was a little disappointed. I I got a 90 minute deep tissue and it wasn't deep. And the woman was a little too thin, a little too petite. And as soon as I walked in, I was like, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. And she did not come to play. And too, I'm too skinny, too thin. Well, here's too the thin. deal. So here's what we're kicking out. We're kicking out straight, straight men, straight men and thin, thin, thin women, thin women. Get out. Get the okay, fuck out. Get out of the massage get game. Get out of the massage okay? game. It's a wrap. We're done with you. <laughs> that, that's kind of how I feel. Cause I got, I was just bummed. Cause I thought I'm sure he's very good at his job, but yeah, and I'm not, I'm so comfortable with my sexuality. I don't give a shit that it's a guy. That doesn't bother me at all. Man, right. that, it was just hairy arms, <laughs> like rubbing on my neckline. And I was like, I just don't like this. I, I hear you. I just didn't like hairy arms on my neckline. There was something about it. That I was like, man, I would rather just have like a big boned, not dude. Uh, just, <laughs> give me a like, big bone lady. Just a lady. large German lady. Give me lady. a German lady. Just like here to fuck it yeah. up. Just here to rub you down and fuck it up. You want my legs on your back <laughs> now? <laughs> when I went to Asia. I want Ger- uh, Gerda. Oh, Give me Gerda. Gerda yeah. yeah, Helga. Can get a Helga, just, yeah. Oh. Das ist gut, yeah. Das yeah, ist gut. Can you breathe? Is, huh? is this where the sciatica is? If get up, <laughs> pussy. Get up, you pussy. <laughs> she makes me do push ups in the middle of my massage. Do you, have you ever done a Thai massage? I have, and they will fucking love beat the shit out of you. You like that? I love it. I was in Asia, and I would get Thai massages on the beach every day. And it's wild. There's actually a great place here in Hollywood, in Thai town. And they make you lay flat down on a mat, and you're in these little outfits, right? So you're not even really naked, because mm-hmm. they're stretching you. And all of a sudden, I heard, like, this thing, like, this clicking. And then I'm, so I'm laying down, and I realize a woman is walking on my back, and she's using a walker to get further up. <laughs> and I literally was, like, squeezed in between a walker. I'm like, I'm, this is the shit I'm into. You like that yeah she's got the bars on the top and oh she's yeah like they hold kicking on and she's like dropping that. down i love it it is cool when they step on your back that i yeah. do like but i just don't like if they dig so deep that you feel muscles moving to a different place mm, you know I when your it. muscles like ah and it goes to a separate part of your bone mm-hmm. that i'm like relax relax are you doing physical therapy do you see a chiropractor i do both yeah oh, fuck it's a nightmare yeah it's a it's a fucking nightmare i'm seeing my chiropractor shout out to uh, dr malucci he literally Malooch! he does all the falcons players in atlanta and really? he's like heather your body is fucked up more fucked up than like some of these running backs i'm like <laughs> it's comedy he's like what the fuck are you doing i'm like dude i don't know 
no. Well, I'm, I'm going to utilize that. Next time I see an NFL player, I'm be like, you yeah. think your job is yeah. hard? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself, dude. We train way harder than you guys Tell do. Tell some blowjob jokes and then <laughs> let me know how you feel. Yeah. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, this episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Squarespace. Uh, Squarespace is incredible. Almost every single site I've ever created, except for my very first one, uh, was with Squarespace because they make it so simple. Even a Dumbo... Even a dumbo, bimbo like me. Can you call dudes bimbo? I'm a bimbo. I'm a dumb bimbo. I'm a goon. An idiot. Uh, Not smart. And uh, it makes it so easy because they have so many different platforms for you to use to create your own beautiful site. Um, They have an online store. If you're selling stuff, what are you selling over there? What website do you need to sell whatever you got going on? You making uh, uh, stormtroopers out of Legos? Uh, Sell them. I don't know. That's probably copyright infringement, but do your thing. Uh, They have custom merch where you can uh, custom merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience. Um, They also have an asset library you can upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. Uh, My favorite, of course, I've talked about this, the email campaigns and the analytics. Find out where your fans are clicking from. Then you can deliver more to those that need it. All right. They also have blogging tools. If you're a blogger, baby. They got powerful blogging tools to share stories, videos, updates, categorize and share and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. Look, if you're looking to create a site, I don't know why you're turning anywhere uh, other than Squarespace. They do it the best. Go rogue or use these beautiful templates that they've got. And they have such phenomenal customer service. If you're confused uh, while you're building your site, they're there for you. Get over to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, uh, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com. Check it out. If you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. The Maru. Yeah, I have, I'm doing both. I'm doing chiropractor. I'm doing... Physical therapy. Acupuncture. Physical therapy. I've done cupping. I've, I do it have all. Have you done dry needling? Yeah, I've done yeah. dry needling. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, that gets me hard. Well, because it goes way in there. And then you feel the needle against your bone and yeah, the nerve. Wild. It's a little Ooh. weird. It's a little weird I, to feel it so deep. You're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, we're going to put a heat lamp over you now. And, <laughs> and you're sitting there with that heat lamp on you, and you have nothing but yourself to think. Because he says, do you want music? And I usually go, no music, because I'd like to just... Just let it, let yeah. it spin. marinate, let marinate. it spin, spin, spiral, mm-hmm. and it feels really good. But there are moments where I'm like, "Man, this is so strange that these things are like touching all the way through my body." Little knives, little knives. I, yeah, I do panic, and then I get up from the table, and I immediately want to throw up, like yeah. immediately. Yeah, I don't feel good. Yeah, I don't feel good. Um, I went to this guy in New York. I was really burnt out on the road, and I went to this guy. He was like this voodoo witch doctor. He was like, stick out your tongue, showed him my tongue. He looked at my eyes, and he literally nailed what I had. He was like, you've had an ovarian cyst rupture recently, haven't you? I was like, yes. What? I'm just like weeping in this guy's office. My God. Yeah, and then he did the, his dry needling and acupuncture and all this shit, and I was like, so I'm into that. I kind of seek out the crazies, though, I, a little yeah. bit. Well, because there's something about it. Like, the Eastern <laughs> medicine had so many, like, wild uh, trials where they just tried a bunch of weird shit. So yeah. I'm down to f- try something, but I don't... I don't, I don't know if looking at the tongue, that was just a thing he did. Yeah, I think it was a kink, honestly. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you wrote down on a piece of paper, you had an ovarian cyst rupture. <laughs> yeah. You forget you said that. He's like, show me your mouth. He's like, yeah, I see eczema from that fat tongue. Yeah, yeah. look at that tongue, Yeah, baby. I know you're flared up behind <laughs> the legs. Yeah. So then when you fly, what do you do? You stand up and walk around a bunch or no? Oh, I've got, I mean, I could do it right now. You know, I've got my little stretches right here, pulling the leg. I bring yeah. my lacrosse ball. I got my fucking bands. I know. It is sad. Me too. It's so sad. I'm that, I'm, we're, I'm that guy that I'm yeah. like, because I had one time I was on a flight back and I kept going like this, just kind of like to myself. Mm-hmm. And the flight attendant came over and she goes, it's sciatica? Yeah. And I go, <laughs> I do. And she goes, we find each other. My husband has sciatica. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she goes, I can tell it hurts. Do you want an, a bag of ice? And I go, honestly, no, I, I, uh, I'm going to ask you maybe to heat up my heat pad in the microwave. <laughs> And she just kind of stared at me for a minute. I'm like, this is just, more embarrassing for me than it is for bitch, you. Bitch, also, if you're not going to be friendly and help, don't ask. Yeah. Don't bring me solutions if I say, <laughs> here's my bag of rice that I need you to heat up with the coffee pot. And if you're not going to help me, Cynthia, then just shut the fuck up. Help me out, bitch. Oh, I think I got this because my mom got sciatica and we went on a family vacation and we were down the Turks and Caicos and my mom was like bent over a chaise lounge and she was just like groaning like, ugh. <laughs> and my whole family was like, mom, you're fucking embarrassing us. Shut the fuck up. And then literally a year later I got it. I was like, oh, this is me for bullying my mom. Yeah. Like this is this was karma. This you outside of LaGuardia going, yeah. Uh, yeah. Side by side, you and your mom doing that. So 
Like like daughter, like mother, baby. Truly. No, it's it's all the things that our parents didn't tell us that they had. If they had any, any sort of... It's so funny to find out all the health stuff as I've gotten older. Like, my dentist was like, oh, yeah, um, you grind your teeth sometimes. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. So I had to get the mouth guard thing. And he goes, well, you have gum recession. And I said, is that because of it? He's like, maybe, but also some of that's hereditary. So my mom, I was like, do you have like gum problems? And she's like, oh, yeah, you don't know. <laughs> I had to get all I, the time. Then she goes, I had to get the part of my roof. They had to graft her roof to like use the skin on the roof of her mouth for some of her receding gums. And she's like, yeah, that's just that's also part of hereditary. That good old Irish heritage. You know, these uh, fucking health I, nuts. I got it, too. I had to get my dad had such a big gap in his teeth. And then I did as a kid and they they did braces, everything. And it wouldn't work. So they had to cut, you know, that little piece. Of, oh, yeah. That yeah, right yeah. there. I had to get uh, that like cut. And then it finally kind of brought my teeth together. But, oh, I have every ailment that my dad had. I mean, he died of pancreatic cancer. So, God, please. Uh, you like, don't have that. I can tell. Yeah, wait, wait, stick out your tongue. Yeah. Yeah, you okay, don't go. have it. Go, yeah. go, 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 go. <laughs> um, but yeah, w- yeah. When you get older and you're like, oh fuck, this is the shit my dad used to complain about. This one, all mom the things got. that they had. Yeah. Well, you know, like even that, like even anxiety and panic and all that stuff. I had my first anxiety attack in college because I have ocular migraine, so I lose vision in my eye. Mm-hmm. And I ask are we my, the same person? Yeah, we are. I literally go blind on the right side of my face. That's so funny. So do I. And, fuck. And my mom was like, uh, I used to have stuff like that when I was pregnant with you. <laughs> And I was like, fucking well, fun ding, hints, ding, 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 ding. fun stuff to know, mom. Yeah. I was like, how come you don't ever share, your parents don't ever share stuff unless it's like, oh, yes, that's right. I forgot to tell you, you were touched by the priest. And mm-hmm. that, it's like, well, I could be nice to know because I've repressed all that stuff. My mom can never remember whether or not like I had chicken pox or my sister did. She's like, I don't remember. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I need to know this. Like, who had shingles, you know? Right. right. Like, you know. It's the, important. She, she's like, I don't know. I was tired. What do you want from me? Um, I started okay. getting, if you get the really bad migraines, do the Botox. It does help. It's not just an aesthetic thing. It has no, changed the game. I've heard about this. People have said this. Well, I get, because yeah. I get... Uh, yeah, I get the oculars where I can't see, but then what what happens is like then those um what do they call them uh, hemispheric yep. ones, you know? Uh-huh. Man, it hurts like crazy. It's like a it's almost like not even a headache. It's almost like, it's like uh, out of body. Yeah, it feels so strange. Get how it much up it hurts. here. I, I also had to do it because I would chew through my night guards. That's how fucking anxious I've chewed I am. One. I went through one. Yeah, yeah, and my doctor was like, "This is insane." He's <laughs> like, "You're like you you again. You do comedy. Why are we stressed?" Yeah. So I get Botox in my jaw and then up in like right in my temples. So it just freezes me from thinking about anything. From chew. Well, it, it know, helps for, you from from gnawing down. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I can't do sandwiches. <laughs> like anything doughy, <laughs> I like choke and panic. Okay. <laughs> I really. Can't can I just like kind of you know just like kind of slurp on a salad? Has Jeff been blending all of your meals all lately? Of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what. By the way, my uh, my cousin who's living with me is he's he's you know getting in shape and losing some weight, so he's cutting out and he's doing the smoothie thing. Oh, and I feel bad because every time he does it, I'm eating like a nice plate of food. Mm-hmm. And he and I can he's watching me eat and it's yeah, <laughs> and I can see how sad he looks in his face. And there's something about when you have to go through this. I know sometimes you have to cut shit out to get healthier. There's moments in life where I've done it too. But it's so fucking not fun to eat healthy foods. It's like it's a miserable. miserable. It's a miserable way to go through life. I know we all have to do it. But fuck me when I see that. He, I'm like, what did you have this morning? He's like, I had toast and coffee. I'm like, fucking shoot me in the face. Life is too short. After yeah. I lost my dad, I was like, fuck this. I'm not going to live this life. I spent my entire like childhood yo-yo dieting. I was a chubby kid. Yeah. I'm like, listen, I've got great fucking legs. I've got great tits and a beautiful face. Like, whatever. I'm just going to fucking lean in. I don't give a shit anymore. But the funny thing yeah. is, I always lose weight. I gain weight when I'm on the road because I'm not sleeping. I'm stressed. Because with women, it's a lot about our hormones. My cortisol is always high, high, high. Yeah. I went on my honeymoon and I was in Italy for 30 days. I drank two bottles of wine before breakfast every day by myself, <laughs> ate 65,000 calories, hadn't seen a gre- leafy green in 30 days, and I lost like 15 pounds. Yeah. It's because I was fucking relaxed. Yeah, that's right. I go on vacation and I thrive. <laughs> Most people go on vacation and pork up. I come back and people are like, you're glowing. Like, I need the fucking time off. Yeah, well, because your stress levels are low. That yes. is what's funny when somebody goes, stress how, come fucks I went me to, up. how come I went to Italy or how come I went to Spain and we lost weight? And Americans always go, because the food is better. You're like, yeah. yes, I know. But you're also not fucking worried when you're over there. I'm filled with joy. Yeah, I'm not dead free. inside. Right. Yeah. Where here, every <laughs> every every chance you get, you're like, well, I should stop doing everything because I suck and I hate myself and fuck me. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. It's just because when you're gone, you don't have to think about the bullshit. You don't have to think about the bullshit. You don't have to think about what the next move is, who's telling you no. And right. like, we both act, right? So yeah. that's my thing. My husband gets so frustrated because, you know, 
when I would like self tape and then like do these producer callbacks and you just like never hear and he would just get so frustrated for me he's like they should at least fucking call you and yeah. tell you that they you know thought they should have the fucking decency to ha- say something say something yeah we didn't like you because yeah. you are a woman Fine. I don't give a fuck tell me whatever you want right you know I just be honest with me I'd rather know, know than not know yeah Same. I always hated not know the not knowing felt somehow more offensive I'd yeah. rather than be like dude you you fucked that read up that was bad I'd be yeah. like you, that's good you're I'd a love- terrible actor you should never be in this business thank, thank you much you. thank you much it's better than doing the read kind of well and mm-hmm. then um them, them just being like bye see ya and then you never hear again yeah i always fucking hated that bothered me the most well that's why later in my career more recently like i've just um i'm more picky about what i decide to like even try for yeah because i at, at when i was young i shot so many i shot at everything and now i'm like they know and i know that i'm not right for that mm-hmm. they just enjoy your this other like i'd love to see her read but you're right. like you don't want me in that fucking thing and if you did and i say no well then maybe you'll come back and go we got to have you read for the thing because they really like it so okay fine but at, at face value now if i know immediately i'm like this isn't for fucking me i just say no this specifically says like petite asian woman like yeah, why well, am i reading for me. this that's, that's for, for me that's for me <laughs> Yeah, I have this theory that all of the self tapes and all the audition tapes that I've done over the years, like I never was actually auditioning for anything. And then these are in a vault somewhere. And then at my funeral, they're going to play it. And they're like, like the Truman Show, like, joke was on her. And that's going to be the cruelest thing anybody will ever do. Look at this fucking twat. Yeah. Hi, it's me. It's Heather, side profile. Yeah. Heather McMahon, 5'9, Atlanta, Georgia, reading for the hooker. Yeah. Every day of my life. It is hard. It is. uh, It's hard on your ego for sure. When somebody says, like, you know, that, that, old Hollywood adage of like uh, you get a thousand no's before you get a blah, blah. Right. you don't even get a no you get no. A nothing it's a thousand fucking nothings crickets nothing and yeah. then finally you go on vacation and then they call you hey we're shooting tomorrow you booked it and I'm like I'm in fucking Mallorca yeah, I can't suck do my it. dick yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of office I am 10 pounds down I'm drunk as fuck right now eating paella leave me alone hell yeah yeah that's how I live I like drinking in the morning by the way that on vacation drinking in the morning is yeah. so okay it's so okay yeah here I feel weird and guilty about mm-hmm. it but like there I posted a picture on my Instagram when we first got to Bora Bora for my birthday yeah I fuck we, they left a bottle of rosé in the room as like a hey welcome to vacation and I was like I don't really like rosé that I finished the whole fucking thing there naked w- on my was back it porch. whispering angel like the best of the best yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. there is yeah. nothing better to me than breakfast wine specifically in Italy because no one judges you yeah. right well they're I, having it I have cappuccinos macchiatos I'll have 65 pastries and then I open a nice mm-hmm. glass of gavi which is like my 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 Italian that's, your shit. Wine. that's my shit oh yeah. look at you. Yeah, there's me drunk on rose. Good just for you, as you should. Faced. Yeah, really oh drunk. Oh my god! I was, in fact, I was real drunk. Caught a little bit of a sunburn. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. I imagine you catch a sunburn in the shade. There so. was six seconds. I was in. That was a six second photo shoot. Yeah. No, I literally that was little like, hiney. I fell asleep. So cute. Well, I fell asleep. That was a really bad idea. I don't know if Jeff's gonna be mad that you're staring at my butt. Oh right no! Now, but uh, he's got a great butt too. Love you, honey. Yeah, he does. In he fact, does. Send more pics. Send more, send more pics. pics, Jeff. Yeah. No, but you know, you need, you need, you need that just as much as you need to be the workhorse that you kind of have in your blood. Last time we talked, I think we talked about that. It's, it's as important to take the breaks because, you know, like we went on tour with Bad Friends and mm-hmm. we got overwhelmed and we had a, like a little. I had a mental break. <laughs> yeah. Big time. Had a big mental break. Mm-hmm. And so now we kind of sectioned it out a little bit easier. But it will get to you when you're touring with people. Touring alone or on your solo tour, mm-hmm. it's it's a little bit easier. Uh, but balancing a whole crew of fucking idiots, it's personalities is yeah. tough. That's why I see I understand why bands break up. Oh, I 100%. Get it. I fucking get it. Because it is so much personality. I mean, even like touring with other comedians, you know, I it's mean, tough. just, and I'm, all my best friends work with me. So there are days where I'm like, guys, I don't want to see any of y'all <laughs> for at least 48 hours. And then I'll see you in Omaha this weekend, but everybody better behave. Yeah. Like I'm trying, kind of the den mother. And I, I yeah. mostly travel with like dudes, which is like, you know, I gotta, I gotta switch that up. But no, no, know. I say leave it there. Yeah. Do you have the same people that open for you or no? Yeah. It's just my buddy. It's people in my life. It's not even, uh, my buddy Ray's opening for me right now. And I used to never bring an opener. I I used to open for myself as a character because that's like what my audience loved. And then I realized I was doing too much. Theo literally was like, why are you doing this? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, so now I, I've relinquished some of that. So your buddy does, he does yeah. time up front, then you still do an hour. But yeah. you But you shift, you don't do, you don't do any more like character shifts in no, and out. No, 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 it's just, it's just me doing, yeah, doing stand up, doing the, you know, just letting it rip, having fun. You don't need the pressure, honestly. Like, yeah. That's a big, there's so, like, we change a lot on our show as the Bad Friend show is, and it's heavy, man. I think it's more work than people know that you're, yeah. like, when you've got a lot of things moving, like, moving mm-hmm. pieces. 
That's why when they said there were, you know, people would be like, it's got to be so much fun, you guys together. It's like, it is really fun. It's also way easier to do a solo show because you're like, all I have to do is do the thing that I'm doing and then not think about what's I, coming next. I only have to rely on myself. Yeah. Relying on other people is the bane of my existence. Tough. Because I know how hard I work. And then when people are like, when I have friends who are like, don't, they'll say like, I just don't really want to work that hard. You know, mm -hmm. they're like, I could be successful, but I don't really want to work that hard. I'm like, I just want to choke them. You know, I'm like, mommy's tired, but I'm so glad we're enjoying the St. Regis. You know? <laughs> See? Fuck. That's why I tell them. That's why I stick them in the fucking the red roof in, baby. Yeah. Honestly, that's going to build character, okay? That's going to build character. Yeah. You, how, you're young. Yeah, he's 24. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, you should be at the red roof That's end. what the I'm one saying. by the highway. That's what I'm saying. Not the nice one by the top golf. No. The one by the, the sketchy part of the highway. The view of the highway. Yeah. You, and the that... view of the off-ramp, too. One of the saddest parts of the highway. Mm -hmm. So you see people slowly getting off, exiting at <laughs> night, sad. That's what I want you to see. Yeah, a lot of sadness underneath the bridge, a lot of methamphetamines. Uh -huh. That's what you need to be absorbing in your youth so that you sh shape up, okay? Shape up, shithead. Shape up, shithead. Did you have any wild shit happen on the road on this tour? <laughs> oh, God. Well, here's the thing. So my audience is, uh, you know, largely female. These women don't give a fuck. Yeah. I um, so when I come off stage, I immediately get out of my costume. Like I like to wear a show suit. I like to, I'm not just a jeans, a t-shirt gal on the road. So I get hot in that thing. So I run back to my dressing room and I strip down. Ten seconds after I've stripped down, this woman is in my dressing room, and she's about this close to my face, and she just goes, "I found you." Oh my god! And I said. You sure did. And she's in full cheetah print and glitter. And <laughs> I said, hold on. So I like grab my clothes, throw something on. And she's like, don't worry. Oh, my God. I'm not going to touch you. I'm like, well, now that you just said that, it's you've yeah. doubled down on the. I won't yeah. touch you. They might touch will. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. So I, my buddy, Chris, who produces for me on the road, he hears this. He comes around the corner. He's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and this girl, you know, she's drunk and she's in her little outfit. And she's like, no, no, no. We're cool. We're cool. She's like, I just want to say hi. We have a party us. The show is incredible. Do you want to hop on our party bus tonight? I'm like, let me just put on a dry thong, okay? <laughs> and so I ask her, I'm like, I'm going to walk her out. So I walk her out. Security, meanwhile, th the reason security let her back is because I had bought a bunch of like Chick-fil-A party platters full of nuggets because I'm too nice. Oof, so all of security is hovered over these party platters. I'm like, guys, I'm feeding the crew or whatever. And um, so they just let this woman back. She's like, yeah, I just told them like, hey, I'm here for Heather. I told my name was Lane. And the next thing you know, like, I'm in your dressing room you know smelling your underwear i'm like tight what security the tight security real tight security but this is my fault i yeah. didn't say like hey wait you know 30 minutes till after the show and then you guys can go home right i'm like here's snacks yeah i have i i am the problem we had a guy do no we had a guy break in in dallas what happened huge venue by the way that, that fucking place was huge they had like 90 million play? security guards what was it called i don't even remember what the name was, was it the really called? fancy one the majest uh the um yeah but it was like and it was like a fucking amphitheater it was absurd i don't even i don't remember the name of it but it was uh you know what i have to tell you just because i want yeah because you might you might know i basically played the stockyards in fort worth which is also insane it was just one of those places where i, I knew I, I, it was just so overwhelmingly large. Like I thought, well, of course someone could break into here because right. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like here, it's called. Oh wow, what was that called, dude? I can't find it. Yeah, well, is it? Oh fuck. It was huge. Yeah, it was massive. It was massive. No, the majestic is a great venue. I've done that one. Um, but anyway, I can't find the. I can't find where we were. So what happens? But so so this guy. Um, I don't even know how we got back. I don't even know where we were when he was back there. But he basically like comes running up, and I thought he was maybe part of the crew. He's like a little mm -hmm. skinny, kind of like tiny little Asian guy. And I was like, oh, is he working with him or whatever? And he goes, hey, I broke in. I, I broke <laughs> Just I, right out the gate. I broke, I broke in. in. No, seriously. And then he goes, I, I snuck in. Um, I snuck into the – I didn't even have a ticket. I broke into the venue and snuck backstage. And immediately we were like, uh, uh. get somebody. <laughs> and one of the security Carl, guards. Carl, you just start Carl calling yeah. for a guy named Carl. Carl. Carl? Well, there was always a Carl. Always a Carl and he's always security. Like, what do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, break. Yeah. And then the security came, like, come running over and they accost him. And I was like, whoa, whoa, it's like, you don't have to hurt him. He's not going to do anything. He just, I was like, but this is not good. You guys, he broke into the venue and snuck back somehow. Yeah. And they were like, uh, what, what, you know, what the, what the fuck is this all about? And then he says, I do this. Like, this is what I do. That's his shtick. Yes, he breaks oh, okay. into venues for live shows well, that he got, likes and tries to insane. get back. I know, dude. He goes, I do this all the time. And I was like, why? And he's like, it's fun. I want to see how many concerts I can break into without a ticket and get backstage. And I was like, do you, does this work? He goes, I've never not, it's never not worked. And then as they're like, not arresting him, but like, uh, like him physically out. getting him yeah. out, 
it, I like took a lot out of me, but I was like, it's good to meet you, man. Like, <laughs> it, you was, a photo? it was impressive as shit. I was like, fuck. I mean, I don't want to encourage it, but I was, I was shocked he was able to get into that venue because it was so heavily secured. I mean, it was like every single corner. It looked like an like if it looked like where they would do an athletic uh, event, and there's security at every single fucking yeah. nook and cranny. And this this dude didn't even have a ticket and broke in. I was like, that's pretty impressive. Women can get away with a lot more. I always thought that oh, they, yeah. they did in Practical Jokers, but with women, how much more extreme it could be? Because like, and it'd I be mean, really practical though. I mean, so it would be, be practical really jokers. fucking practical. Yes, practical. But the jokers. shit that I could get away with. I mean, I see these women; they just can sweet talk their way through anything. I'm like, they could get away with fucking. Murder. Well, if I'm a security guard and you come up to me and yeah. you say, hey, I'm Heather's cousin, and uh-huh. I, I would most likely go, yeah, yeah right. I believe that. You yeah. look well put together. <laughs> right. But a guy that's like, can I go back there? You're like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I know them. Like, you know, like guys can never sell it. You know what I mean? Right. Because every guy that wants to actually get backstage is this always like ornery weirdo. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, a, a woman who knows that she has like the just that confidence to get away with it. Yeah, I would let her go. I'd be like, oh, go ahead. You know, Heather. Go my ahead. first year on tour, I basically started this, like every woman who's coming to my show started a charcuterie board business because people are like, what do you like on your ride? I'm like, honestly, I like like a, you know, a nice charcuterie board, some cheese, some meat, some salam, whatever. That's what I munch on backstage. So women would just show up with their homemade charcuterie boards and venues would be like, we have 40 women outside <laughs> with charcuterie boards and they would like make little business cards on Vistaprint like Anne Marie charcuterie and they were all just <laughs> started a business like that night and that's how they thought that they would get back yeah but good for these girls you gotta yeah. keep trying keep swinging smart what what is your rider now is um, it charcuterie board it, i still like a charcuterie um we do I, a meat and cheese we do meat and cheese and uh-huh. and uh fruit when we do but we always have fruit that nobody touches nobody touches it we have a veggie tray with like a shitty hummus yeah we do um that. i do have a specific like a nice willamette valley oregon pinot noir Ooh. and i do the the mountain valley water that's my jam listen spring this spring water spring and water, a baby. glass bottle give it oh my god my give nips are hard well, that you know, is fresh you elvis feel- elvis loved it so i love it you know he had these for every show of course he did. Yeah, that was his thing. He yeah. wanted it. And so by way of me saying I like Mountain Valley, our tour manager, this is very sweet of her, though, she always has it in my hotel, too. Oh. Which is really rad. She shows up early. It's, like, very nice because she's – I'm always, like – I like I like bottled water, but I like glass bottle. I don't like bottles. Yeah. And I was, like, it's not a big deal. And I kind of wrote it off, like, it doesn't bother me. I couldn't care. I'll drink right. whatever. You're but not going to be a dick about it. No, I don't yeah. care. But she's, like – she loves it. She's, like, I like it. It's specific, and it's not. It, it's not expensive. It's not, like – I want something absurd because our backstage is pretty bare minimum. Yeah. Because no, Bobby's sober. There's not a lot of drinking or anything. Mm-hmm. There's nothing going on. So we get me and cheese, Mountain Valley water, and then I always like popcorn. I love pop. I'm like a child. I love popcorn too. My I favorite like thing at the holidays is when you get the tin drum and mm. you know it's just chock full of chemicals. Mm. And I take my little finger and I go from the cheese to the butter yeah. to the to yeah. the caramel and I put it all in my mouth and I just ooh yeah a little chipmunk yeah just, a little ooh, cheese and cho- a little cheese and caramel chipmunk. I love sweet and savory. Now are you crazy enough to pull out the middle divider and let them mix or you keep them separated? Yes, well, yeah, Chica- I mix them. you're from Chicago. That's right, baby. And y'all got that real garrets, it, baby. Garrets, the best at the airport. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, and they sometimes they'll do the white chocolate. Drink. Drizzle, and I'm just like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Drizzle me, baby. Drizzle me. I always pull out, and my mom used to yell at me. She hated that. But I, I didn't I like the divider. Mix. I said, let it mix. Let it mix. And you know what? That's why I'm a liberal, and you're <laughs> a Democrat. Ma. I don't know. You're a Republican. I fucked it up. No, it is true. I always like to let them uh, mix together because I hated the separation, especially if it's like with sisters or siblings or friends. One side would always get... You know, overtaking. Yeah, so and it's, it's usually like, the butter popcorn that nobody wants to touch. Nobody wants it. Nobody really. wants it. It's no. a cheddar. I want it to be so like electric neon that I can't get yeah. the dust off. Make it glow. You know, I want to glow. Make it glow. Yeah, that's kind of like why I used to eat Seven uh, Eleven uh, uh, nacho cheese because it was it really did glow back in the day when I used to get it when I used to live in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And that was like my meals at night. I'd go get nachos or chicken wings. Or whatever. I always really loved how glowy it was, and mm-hmm. only till I became an adult did I realize. Um, it's not real, and it's definitely killing you. It's 100% killing you. Yeah. Actually, I will say, if somebody's like, what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear is fake cheese, but not the powdery. I don't know why. On the on the popcorn, I can handle it. Powder's fine. But the, the nacho ball, ballpark cheese, Bad. literally, I, I 
I can't even think about it right now. I'm I'm unwell, but my biggest fear is craft singles. Craft singles, American Wait, cheese really? in the plastic. <laughs> swear to God. Andrew, I swear to God, if one of my girlfriends really fucked me up once in my sorority, she put a bunch of craft singles, unwrapped them, and put them underneath my pillow. So when I went to lay down at night, I just Ugh. felt them. I, I can't handle it. Like, it's like, it's like well, my buddy Nick has a big aversion to mayonnaise. Like it re- physically oh, makes him mayonnaise. ill. Oh, it makes him ill. Yeah. The smell of it makes him ill. Okay. Like, so when we were working together, it was so mean. We would take mayonnaise from the kitchen and we'd like we'd, we'd spread some like inside of us like his backpack yeah, or like on the underside dick. of his computer yeah. case it was so fucking mean uh, so then he'd pull it out and be like ooh, 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 like, in the writer's room and start to and he'd be like what the fuck you got uh, uh, and it'd be all over his fingers it was so fucking mean but I was like I didn't know anyone that freaked out about mayonnaise that much but he would have panic attacks about mayo and we'd spread it on his, the corners of his plate mm-hmm. and he would fucking lose his mind I, I that's I don't have anything like that that gets me gaggy except for like when I was a kid, my mom used to make liver and onions, and the smell of liver. Oof, yeah, I can't fuck with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that fucks me up. If the smell of liver really makes me yag. I I worked in a lot of fine dining in New York, and so I can't do like a foie gras. Like everybody loves that shit. I can't or a pate. I can't handle it because yeah. I used to serve that shit all the time, and I just it just reminds me of like being verbally abused by a lesbian <laughs> chef somewhere in Hell's Kitchen, and you know what I mean because yeah. I wouldn't date her, and I'm like I'm I'm, I'm not into women. She's like, you're gay. Yeah, you're, you're gay. gay. You know it. With those shoulders, Heather, you are fucking gay. <laughs> and no, I did work at one restaurant, and I worked in you know Boys Town in Hell's Kitchen, and we had one of the first gay weddings receptions in New York. This back in like 2009, and all the other gay guys. That worked in the restaurant told this gay couple that worked there that I was trans, and so the couple, they they came. It was like months later that nobody had told me that these that the the whole restaurant yeah. told this couple that had their wedding at our restaurant that I was trans. And so one of the guys was sitting at the bar. And he's like, I just want you to know, like, it's really incredible to see what you've done. And I was like, What? Stop, Tyler. What are you talking about? He's like, Well, we we know, you know, Chris and Dom told us. And I was like, What? And they're like, Your work's just really good because I have a deep voice, broad shoulders, right, mm-hmm. and big tits. And they just, you just, I was like. You, th- I, I am not. I was like, I am a hundred percent. Okay, estrogen. who's your doctor? Exactly, exactly. Who's and then when your you double doctor? down, when you try and like say, like, yeah. no, I am woman. Look at this pussy. They're like, okay, all right. Sweetheart. And then they look at it. They're like, yeah, that is really good. That is nice. That's some of the best work I've ever seen. Yes. In here, we pour whiskey. Whisk. Lucy. Who am I, Desi Arnaz? Come on, baby. Lucy, baby. Here to talk about Lucy. Lucy makes tobacco-free nicotine for people to focus better, think deeper, chill out smoother, and inspire creativity. Lucy's incredible. A lot of people know. Uh, I know I don't know smoke a cigarette anymore, but I do like to take a couple of nicotine to the dome. Um, and nicotine, hey, man, it can help you out. It really can. It increases uh, alertness, attention, mood, focus better, think deeper, inspire your creative brain. Just relax. It's 100% pure tobacco-free nicotine, which is great. You'll never find tobacco in any of the products ever. And they're available in five different strengths. Two milligram all the way up to 12 if you're a big dog. You're putting in some upper lippers? Are you putting in some 12s upstairs? That's insane. They got cinnamon, mint, mango, wintergreen, pomegranate, apple ice, and espresso. I like the mango. I'm a big mango, 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 my mango. I love to pop it in uh, when I'm playing golf. I like it when I'm taking a long walk in the neighborhood with the puppuccino. Uh, and the flavors are delicious. They're long-lasting. Um, they're, they're pretty superior to a lot of these pouches that are out there right now. Um, smooth, uh, and it delivers at a constant stream, and it's the perfect balance of nicotine and flavor. It's uh, very, very good. Whether you use nicotine to focus better, get a boost in energy, or to chill or relax, Lucy is made for your nicotine routine. Uh, if you want to try Lucy's tobacco-free breakers, pouches, or gum, go to lucy.co slash whiskey and use promo code whiskey to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping, has 30-day refund policy, okay, if you change your mind. That's L-U-C-Y, L-U-C-Y, sorry, that's L-U-C-Y dot C-O. Use the code whiskey to get 20% off and always free shipping. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Hey, we've all been there racing to multiple stores, spending way too much time scanning the shelves for the perfect present only to settle on another gift card for mom. All right? Here, mom, it's for chilies. Enjoy. Uh, it's almost a tradition at this point. Well, it's bad. Break it. Here's a gift idea that can make your mom really happy this year. A digital picture frame from Aura Frames, okay? All her favorite pics are already preloaded on there. It's the best digital photo frame. It's incredible. We've given out so many to our family and friends. We love it. Thank you to Aura for that, for giving us a bunch to give to our family and our friends. We preloaded some photos. Look. 
If you're new in a relationship, load photos of you just sitting around being cute. You want that thing to last? All right. Uh, but it is great to give to uh, particularly mom. I got to tell you because, you know, I don't know what to get, mom. Uh, she's got everything she needs. She's fine. She's in love and she's happy. But get her some photos of you, your brother, your sister, the dog, maybe a vacation spot that you guys all love together. Um, is a gift that keeps on giving. It's unlimited storage, so you and the rest of the family can upload as many pics to the frame as you want. Year-round, keep switching them out. All you need is the free Aura app. It's that simple. Give your mom the most thoughtful gift ever this year. I did, and I uploaded a bunch of photos of just me real close like this to my mom, and it's very funny. Uh, give the perfect gift this holiday season by visiting AuraFrames.com slash whiskey today and get $30 off their best-selling frames. These frames sell out very quickly, though. Act now. Get yours before they're gone. That's Aura Frames, A-U-R-A Frames.com slash whiskey. Use the promo code whiskey to get $30 off their best-selling frames this holiday season. Give someone a photo of you. Huh? Upload. Terms and conditions apply. Ginger. I like gingers. I, I, uh... I that kind of pranking people to, like with that kind of shit where you don't know that they're fucking with you behind your back and you find out a long yeah. time later. Big payoffs like that are really smooth. The best. I, I really like that. I also, you know, Grinder for gay men. Of course, Do you know Grinder. Do you know Grinder? I'm not on Grinder. <laughs> I'm not on it. So the big red rocket forty two sixteen. Yeah, come dumpster sixty nine right here. <laughs> I became addicted to Grinder and these other gay guys that I worked with were finally because okay when Grinder came out, it was. In the beta phase when I was living in Hell's Kitchen in New York. Mm -hmm. This is back in 09. This is probably why they got back. They they did this to me because I got addicted to Grinder. So I download the app and like all these guys that would come in, I would, you know, be on the app. They didn't know. I use like a Ralph Lauren model as my my avatar. Right. And so these guys, my customers, you know, it'd be like Big Dick Daddy, 43. It would show you the distance. They're like, it's three feet away. Sure. So I was having like fucking around with these guys. I just wanted free dick pics. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, why not? And a gay penis is always nice, smooth, trimmed, all that. Clean for sure. And I would lay in my apartment and I would just talk to these guys all the time. And then finally got around my my coworkers were like, Heather, you can't be on this app. Like, this is for gay men. We're like testing this app out. So um, they had an intervention and I had like five of my gay besties sit me down. They're like, you're addicted to Grindr and you need to stop. So then finally I had to let everybody know it was me and I sent photos of my tits to everyone. Yeah, but that's a nice exchange. Nice exchange. You pay them back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I did. You got a lot of nice dick pics though. I got a lot of nice dick pics. Did you save any of them? Um, I, yes, I have. Yeah, for you got sure. a they're on, a, they're on an old iPad that I don't know how to like turn on but i'll find them <laughs> and so jeff can't find them they're titled something like a, a, a nail polish uh nail polish colors i yeah. love yeah mm -hmm. do you, uh, yeah actually i have a secret folder of like uh nudes that my wife sent me mm -hmm. and i and i forgot what i named it it was on a drive and then i opened the drive not like tax ago. documents it just said baseball stuff yeah. <laughs> which is so fucking dumb because i wasn't hiding it from her because she sent them to me right but i was hiding it because i was like i don't want someone to find this drive and right. then find it somehow but i titled it baseball stuff which i thought if i'm a guy i'm clicking on baseball stuff as one would yeah what the fuck that's who i don't want to have find it so baseball stuff's right i'd be like what kind of baseball stuff is this guy looking at <laughs> so i had to all put the, finally i had to, I had to remove them put them on something else but those old photos that you get from your loved one what what can you do with them at some point i gotta, found all gotta... my nudes on jeff's ipad the other day and i immediately when i first started to look through it, i don't care if he looks at porn or whatever i started to i got pissed because i was like who the fuck is this <laughs> and then i looked and i was like okay yeah i know them all that's me that's me <laughs> he's like they're you heather i was like but also you just leave your ipad like in your golf locker at the fucking country club yeah. and shit yeah like as one does but i was like let you the boys see it they're not in a folder what i'm trying <laughs> to say is honey mine aren't in a folder you need to lock it down okay jeff i want to see baseball stuff on an iPad yeah. folder for you very <laughs> soon. I just write Heather's baseball stuff. Yeah. I am one of those people though. I look way better just fully naked than like if I'm trying to send you like a lingerie shot. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. look good. Like I am I am a, you know, a renaissance woman. Like I just need to be laying out just titties up. Yeah. Pay me like one pa of your French girls. Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. that's funny you say that cuz I watched that show The Nude The Naked Attraction or whatever it's oh. called where they start naked. Obsessed with it. Well, you know what's insane? What? Some of these people, I mean a lot of these people have very nice bodies. And yeah. all different kinds of bodies. But the fascinating thing is they show you them with clothes on at the end mm -hmm. and they don't pay a lot of, they don't give it a lot of time. I'm more interested in that because a lot of them, they were so beautiful naked and then with clothes on, you're like, yeah, yeah. terrible fucking fashion. <laughs> they look like shit. I was like, that would deter me so much. I had no idea how beautiful your nudity was uh -huh. because the fashion was dog shit. Terrible. Like 2000, like two. Yeah, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. It's outdated. It's a brand new show, but you see some of the outfits. You're like, what the fuck? That's what that, but then you think, 
who is willing to get butt naked on TV like that? Not it, somebody, a Maxinista. You yeah. know what I mean? Not somebody <laughs> who's crushing a Saks Fifth Avenue yeah. in the latest, or hitting Supreme with the latest streetwear. Right, wear. that's what I thought. They're like, what am I getting paid for this show? $100? I show my wiener? All right, I'm in. You got it. You got it. Well, there was one guy, this this guy had such a nice pipe, and he had elephant uh, elephant ears, I, elephant I, tusks. I picked that guy. Yeah. So I just watched this with Jeff the other night, and I was like, I'm not into, that's not my vibe. I already knew he was going to be kind of like the travel tribal tat guy. Sure. I knew he was going to have the dreads. Like, I just already knew. Right. But I said, at least you give me give me a little, you know, something to talk about. It's fun. I wanted to go with the elephant Titus penis man. I liked it. Yeah. The elephant trunk was because some of the other guys have just regular cool penises. Yeah. And it, it's eh. a big fucking deal. You got to have. So I, if I went on that show, I would shave my pubes in some kind of fun fashion. Yeah. That at least gives someone they're to already say, fucking, hello. Well, they're already orange, which right. to me, I guess that's a trigger. But honestly, I do it in the thing that gave you. Yeah, that's, that's the guy it. with and the elephant beautiful. penis. And he's beautiful. Look at those piercing blue eyes. Great I eyes. mean, this guy was so great. And they ended up linking up. But that's it. Look at it. Mm-hmm. He had an elephant tu- elephant yeah. ears and tusks. Uh, she had a great body, too. She had yeah. great titties. I mean, see, that's the thing. Is mo- oh, they all do. They all I haven't seen. Titties. I haven't seen too many of, like, like not so good bodies. Uh-huh. Because you got to have a lot of balls to get on that fucking show anyway. Yeah, it's so awkward, though, when they, like, you know, when they get rejected. She's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to cancel blue, right? So, you know, the guy comes out, and then she sees her face, and then they just like kind of awkwardly hug. It is <laughs> so, so fucking weird. bizarre. They shouldn't hug. I don't they know should they not hug. hug. They should never hug. It is It is really sad to see one guy I paid attention to a little bit too close, and this mm-hmm. is weird of me, but I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I'm ready for his it. His penis got smaller as the time went on because mm-hmm. I'm sure his insecurity like was like, in. yeah, it was like, mm-hmm. ra- I'm sure he was getting more like nervous or uncomfortable. And so like at the beginning, he had a, he had a hanger and then it got smaller, and by the time he got rejected, it was, like, comical. I was like, that's so weird. He got so tense and fucked up about, sh- you know, her getting to see his face that his dick, you know, Re- went back, recoiled. recoiled into his body. But also think about it. In that studio, it's probably freezing, too. I would be just tugging on it just to try I to get some blood to I was wondering about it. that. I was wondering, yeah, yeah. What, what the guys had to do to prep. Well, you got to do something. <laughs> also, I would say, keep it a little bit warmer. Because colder you get, the harder it is for us to keep any sort of blood down there. But yeah, I'd be smacking it the whole time. Just, just, just slapping Yeah, when they go dick. to break, I'd just be holding onto the head and just banjoing that thing. But now, 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 now. There was a famous strip club. It recently closed. Rest in peace. It's called Swingin' Richards in Atlanta. And it was an all male strip R. I. club. RIP. And um, you would walk in, and the first thing you'd see is this guy named like the Hammer. And he would just be doing the fucking <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> Biggest cock you've ever seen in your life. And my sister, she's a criminal defense attorney. So she represented a lot of the dancers because, you know, they get DUIs or whatever. Yeah. So we would go in there on a Wednesday and she's like meeting with a client or whatever. And I'm in there and I'm just literally like, she's like talking business with this guy who's just fucking hog is out. <laughs> and all the other women would get so jealous because like, how are you getting like attention? She's like, no, 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 I'm his attorney. Like, yeah. let me relax. But I would then get drunk and, and you know, I'd, ha- I'd somehow get their number. Or, so my sister told one of these guys, she's like, hey, why don't you run security for my sister? Like, you know, she's on the road. You're yeah, a big we dude. need it. You got a big dick. We big need security. Dick. Yeah. And then I ended up cash apping this guy once. Fifty dollars because nobody believed me how big this dick was, and I literally met like I'm in Italy with my husband at dinner. I'm like Jeff, you don't understand this guy's dick was so big. He's like okay, other. So I ended up texting the guy, and I was like fifty bucks cash. Send me your dick. I sent him a cash app, and then I yeah, and just like what are you doing? We're on vacation. I'm just proving dinner. to you how big his dick was. I'm letting you know that this man will probably run security for me. <laughs> That's his resume? That's his resume. Just send a picture of your cock. We'll decide how tough you are from there. But see, I would say maybe you want a guy with a small penis. He probably has a lot to prove. He does have a lot to prove. Small dick security feels like he's ready to fight everybody. Big dick, he's comfortable in his own skin. Big dick security's letting the fucking girl go backstage. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, I got a big dick, I'm eating Chick-fil-A. There was one guy that would come out, and his whole shtick, that he was a Georgia Tech student, and he would just come out and, like, you know, literally these, like, granddad New Balances, mm-hmm. and he'd take his jeans off, and he had the tiniest penis ever, and the whole audience <laughs> was just like... Oh, yay! And would just clap. His whole shtick was that he was like a Sigma Chi from Georgia Tech. And he would just in his new balances and like take off his Patagonia. Little and tiny. Little tiny. Little but tiny everyone guy. gave him so much money. I was like, he knew what he was doing. See, that is the thing. That That's one of those tricks where you see, you go to a male strip club, everyone's has to be well endowed to even right. want to work there. The little penis guy is actually the genius. So smart. Yeah, because that's a- Entrepreneur. Vent- that's a good trick. That's a great trick. Right, that's a great trick. I haven't seen that one before, right? And honestly, women, like a really big dick, 
Yeah, skinny gal. It's too big. It's, it's too yeah, big. it's absurd, huh? It's absurd. Medium dick. But Medium have you ever dick. had a micro penis? You ever experienced I have, that? I have you experienced really that. Have? Yeah, I did. It was in college once, and it was I was very drunk. And what do then, you do? You pat him on the head? Oh, I didn't. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, you're not really paying attention to what's going on, and then you're like, oh, it's in, and it's not in, and you're just like, <laughs> oh, I'm just getting dry humped, you know? But it's like sophomore year. Yeah, have you ever? You've never experienced this. It must be nice. That's awesome. Yeah, that, it's, yeah. It, Well, and it feels for the guy. It's just that you can't do anything. And about they always it. say, if anybody has a really tiny dick, they always say like, don't worry, I'm gonna get you off. And you're like, I'm, I'm good. I'm no, good. I gotta. I'm gonna. Get, I'm gonna get. I'm off. gonna go. I'm I just gonna to go. Yeah. I'm gonna get a hot dog on the way home and just go. <laughs> I get, just, I just, I'm just hungry now. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I'll eat half that hot dog. Throw the other half inside of me, and I'll be fine. Exactly. I get back to the house, pal. Yeah. God. I've I, ne- you know, I've never been to an all male strip club. We did get invited though. Oh, they're we, fun. We got invited to go to Thunder Down Under. We got a VIP oh. invitation from. I don't uh, even know if that's real new. Like, are they fully not? nude? I don't, I don't know. know. I have no idea. But the guy, one of the dancers, is a big fan and invited us to go and gave. Yeah. He's like, "I'll give you the." V-. So when we go to Vegas, apparently we're supposed to go to this. But I maybe it's not. I thought it was a fully nude. Uh, it, it may be one of the tricks that one of the guys had at this place in Atlanta. He would. I mean, this guy had a huge penis. He would like walk down the the runway, if you will, and then he would take a woman's drink. Right? Right, like with a straw. This woman had like a Diet Coke, like a Bacardi Diet Coke. And he would take his penis and then he would like release the straw. So the straw is full of Diet Coke and he would release it down his penis and she would just sit there at the no, end with her God. mouth open. That was the shtick. And I remember sitting there on a, like a Wednesday at 2 p.m. because my sister's doing work and I was like, "We, what the fuck is <laughs> yeah, happening? Dude. Like, I, I don't get it. I, no. I don't get horny from male strippers. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't think. See, I don't. Anytime I've ever. Look at this. Thunder Down Under. They do not, however, reveal their male private parts. Oh, then what Everything are we doing? Else, yeah. I want to see Dong. Yeah, that's bullshit. We'll go to a real strip club over yeah. down there. But I also, growing up in Atlanta, like everything. I mean, yeah, you're they, the strip club hub. We, we got it. Yeah, Magic, we got Magic City, City that's the like Claremont one. Lounge. Yeah. Like, we're doing it. I, I thrive in a strip club because. I always get a lot of attention from the dancers because they always come up to me. They'll always come up to me. I have a very familiar face, even if they don't know me in comedy. And they're always like, do we do we work together? I don't know why. Like, I just, <laughs> I get treated very well by uh, the, the dancers in yeah. strip clubs. You have an inviting presence. Such an inviting presence. Yeah, you're blonde. Mm-hmm. It's, you have this pretty face. People kind of, and as a woman wants to see another woman, that's a familiar thing. Mm-hmm. Instead of a creepy dude. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, yeah. That thing they had, that's that's work. But this it is, is fun. This is fun. It is always. So we used to work together, you mm-hmm. know? And then I'm like, I show my nameplate necklace. I'm like, no, no, no. Just another Heather who's got a smoky voice, you know? <laughs> Did you used to DJ here? Yeah. You yeah. were the DJ. I sure was. Sure no, was, I, Amber. I've been to a bunch of, a bunch over the years, and uh, they're just, I, it, I don't get out of it what I think everybody does. I don't love it. I just like to go have a drink, be with people that are there. Yeah. But I'm usually the first one to be like... I just, it's not as fun for me. I don't know what it is. I just don't care. My husband also doesn't like them. And yeah. I know a bunch of guys are like, okay, yeah, I'm sure he doesn't like it. But he's like, no. why would I just spend a bunch of money to go home with a half chub? He's like, I don't get it's it. It's a little like, weird. It's yeah. a little weird. I'm good. I, I, like, if there's something that's fun with a group of people, that's yeah. cool. We're partying. We're, we're having a laugh. You know, we're yeah. drinking. Great. But it's like you and one other person. It's weirdly sad. Like, you look over yeah. at your buddy who's like too drunk and like thumbing <laughs> through 20s. You're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. What are we doing? Let's just, let's go back to the casino. Like, that's yeah. how I always feel. I'm like, let's go back to the other thing at least there it's less we embarrassing chicken titters. yeah we can yeah we can <laughs> snack at least there we can snack here that's what people do eat at strip clubs in california because they have to serve food if they serve booze at the topless places yeah you can't go there's no alcohol the places that are fully Correct. bottomless yeah, yeah, yeah bottomless you can't Too but then many they rules serve, in california it's silly it's silly. i know for you guys it's no rules no rules so that's, that's you're pussy popping in a handstand while eating you know a rack <laughs> of ribs and like gucci mains behind you and we're just like it's it's like easter it's a know? body it's, it's a, a body, body it's a body, body. It's yeah. a body. Yeah. that I is true that though it is, it is more wild in the south because mm-hmm. there's uh it's a cultural thing though too L.A. is very conscious of everything. So even the strip mm-hmm. clubs here are very like, yeah. they feel very regulated and rule heavy. It, they're shit. And they're people shit. are just insecure. And it, like, I mean, the Claremont Lounge is like one of the most famous strip clubs in Atlanta. It's like where strippers go to die, right? There's mm-hmm. somebody always pregnant who comes out and dances <laughs> to like um, Nine Inch Nails like, I want to fuck you <laughs> like an animal. Nah, 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 and you're nah, just smoking nah, nah. cigs in there, drinking out of like little medicine cups that they serve you like Jägermeister <laughs> in. You're just like, I'm like, I'm home, baby. Like, that's where, that's, yeah, that's, that's what, what I like. like. I like that's, the show. You're willing to spend your money on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm shooting the special in Atlanta next week. Everyone who's coming in, they're like, are you taking 
taking us to Claremont Lounge. I'm like, yeah, we're shutting the place down. You like, should rent it out. I, uh, we're doing it. Yeah, that's yeah. the move. And then they got a great hot dog situation outside. That's where <laughs> that's where I come alive. You know, I am an old, sh- I'm a Broadway kind of gal, but I yeah. also love, I also love a little pregnant stripper and a little Jaeger. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I'm versatile. When yeah. you shoot your special, is this going to be another Netflix special? What are you doing? Are you doing something secretive with it? Um, can I be honest with you? I don't actually really know how it Good. works because I did it with Netflix. I self, I'm self producing it, but I think like contractually, I think they get to like have eyes on it first. Kind sure, of vibe. sure, yeah, yeah. They get first um, look or whatever. Yeah, they get the first look. So, but I'm just doing it on my own. I didn't want to wait around and. I'm just let's you should go. that good for you do shoot your sh- shoot your shot I just feel like now everyone should own their own shit anyway true license it to them yeah. and then you know then move forward mm-hmm. you know like I think it's all changing so much like Bargazzi was did a you know he's been with Netflix for three four specials or whatever and then went he went Amazon. over to Amazon right and because it's like there it's a new world if they're all changing you know if this all this fucking studios all this stuff if they're changing the way they're doing things both financially and and uh program wise well we should have we shouldn't be able to do our shit our way, too. Totally agree. Yeah, because for a long th- time, we couldn't, you know? Thank God for stand-up, too, right? Like, well, obviously, I'm in all the unions, so respect that. Yeah. Um, but it's so nice to be, I'm like, I've been in developmental deals forever with networks for, because I'm, you know, writing sitcoms and all this shit. And it's so nice to just be able to get out, put some asses, mm-hmm. put some pussies in some seats, <laughs> and do what the fuck I want to yeah, do. Yeah, it's fun. I am so sick of waiting on these executives. And, like, you know, they're like, well, we're waiting on Susan to read a script. I'm like, well, who the fuck is Susan? Yeah. Where does she live? She's been in, she's either in rehab. She's in the Maldives. She's in the Maldives. I'm like, well, I'll be in the Maldives. And yeah. I, because I'm, you know, you I'm trying to thrive. Her. Susan, read the fucking <laughs> script. Exactly. Read the fucking script, Susan. Yeah, they don't. Well, that's the thing is a, a part of them keeping their jobs mm-hmm. is largely balancing schedules. So they don't want to make sure they're thumbing through something quickly because then it looks like they're not doing anything. So yeah. if they can kind of have, you know, it, it's almost like, a, have you ever seen those video games or those uh, like iPhone games? It's almost like whack-a-mole. Yeah. Where if they can make a plate just in enough time to serve the next mm-hmm. person, it's easier than to do that than to focus energy, try to make something and then move on. So I found that that, that process is never, never it's exa- ending. It's exhausting. Yeah. And then of course, so I'm I'm touring, this, doing the press for the special, and shooting the next one next week, and now all of a sudden it's like, we need a script in two days. And I said, you guys can fucking wait. Yeah, go fuck off. I am tired. I'm going to go do what I got to do that right. I know is guaranteed, and then you'll get it. Right. And also, are you writing it all by yourself? Uh, I have a writing partner okay. for television, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like, it, it, that's the harder thing, too, when they're like, uh, can you get this turned around quickly? You're like, you didn't do anything quickly. Why do yeah. I have to fucking turn it around? I've been waiting around for three years, <laughs> yeah, and now all of a sudden it's like, it's hot because my face is on Netflix. Right. Like, okay. But that is what it is. They see you on yeah. there. They, it's like, That's all that movement stuff that they're like, she's hot right now. It's like, well, she's been good. Yeah. But you just see her more, so now you're... Now my tits are in your face yeah. on the home screen. Which, which is I'll the name take. of your new special, it, My it Tits is. Are In Your tits Face. Tits Are In Your Face. And it is. I'm doing a topless, and I'm very excited about it. Um, <laughs> I'm doing mine bottomless. What, oh, do you, my God, fun. Yeah, and oh. I, but I have to do this the whole just time. the whole time. That's why I threw on my back you're practicing like, the windmill. let's talk about Biden. <laughs> yeah. And let me say something about Sleepy Joe. <laughs> do you have a name for the new special, or you don't know yet? Um, I do. It's uh, Right now, the working title is Breadwinner. Breadwinner. Yeah, Ooh, very good. And uh, uh, my my, co- you know, because I love a costume. I like to get on stage and feel like I'm ready to go. Yeah. It's showtime. Yeah. So that the vibe for that is Cardi B meets Dolly Parton, mm. and a little uh, little uh, Eddie Murphy raw. Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm wow. excited. Sp- um, uh, wait, no, not raw. Uh, Delirious. We went and played uh, in D.C. That's where we did where he did Delirious. We did that at the. Constitution oh, Hall, very Daughters cool. of the Revolution. Yes. It felt so weird being in that theater. When you play those theaters that these other people that you love have done, you're like, wow, that's fucking, it's something about it. It's so fascinating. Yeah. That you're like, I can't believe we're up here doing our bullshit. Bobby showing his asshole where, you know, Eddie Murphy did Delirious. It's like, well, it's a, it's, it's one of those things where it, uh, it's beautiful to be there, mm-hmm. but it also, it's kind of surreal. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, 100%. What are we doing? We're here? That's fucking nuts. I did Radio City this summer. And Amazing. It, it was the most out of body. Like, I literally was like, what the fuck? I was walking in. Place sold out. I'm like, this is the biggest moment. I've dreamed about this as a kid. And I was like, I should not be here. I literally, my yes, husband had should. to shake me. And he was like, you're going to be great. He's like, put on that fucking <laughs> glitter suit. Hit me in the twat. And I was like, well, please welcome Heather McMahon. And I was like, I just got punched in the pussy. Yeah, Let's go tell yeah. some jokes. A little tap tap. A little tap tap. That encourages
encourages you to get up, yeah. get out there, and have some fun. Yeah, but it was it wasn't until like three weeks later. I was like, w- I woke up in bed and I looked at him. I was like, did that happen? He's like, yeah. Did you did you black out? I was like, F- yes, I yeah. absolutely blacked it out. It is hard to so you try your best, but <laughs> Dude, it's that's hard. That's so cool. Yeah, revolution. It is hard to it, it, oh, Bobby yeah. just kissing little mm-hmm. Filipino men. Mm-hmm. That's our show. That it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the breadwinner, uh, I'm sure, is going to be amazing. But also uh, for the fans out there that haven't seen your special, that's available already right now on Netflix. Uh-huh. Who knows where the, ne- the next one will be? Yeah, watch that one. It may right just be now. streaming at the local strip club. <laughs> like I don't know. Probably playing somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, son, I never had. Son, I never had. Yeah, son, I never had. Mm-hmm. And the breadwinner may be coming out soon. Who mm-hmm. the fuck knows? And you're going to keep touring until you die. Yeah. And I will be at your funeral playing tapes of you doing self tapes for <sighs> roles that you never got. I can't wait. And, and then I'll... I will be, you know, haunt you for the rest. <laughs> of your yeah, you life will. if you pull these videos out of the archive i will fucking haunt you and i will take a shit on you i will dump on your chest every day no. it, it metaphorically i'm into shy i'm into shiza stuff so I be knew careful i knew you were um go see heather uh live right now yep one of my favorite people to talk to you're so fucking funny <laughs> i'm so hung over today i hope this no, was you okay killed. was this mean? okay this so i'm sorry good. I'm like I'm like out of it, you know. I think it was so good. Good. But we learned a bunch of lessons today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most importantly, Jeff, hide those nudes, my guy. Hide those nudes really and also hide those nudes. send more videos of you jerking off to Andrew. Yeah, please. <laughs> because I got to do something during my fucking shitty day. When I'm in physical therapy, I do look at your stuff, Jeff, and uh his golf shit. It helps me get through. Yeah. It helps me get through. Um Go. What's your website? It's uh, heatherontour.com. Heatherontour.com. Yeah. Uh, go see her live. We end the episode the same way. You look into that camera right there. You mm-hmm. say one word or one phrase whenever you're ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, take your time if you need it. Go ahead. One word or one phrase. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> be the you today you want to be tomorrow, but don't be a cunt. <laughs> In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.